Okay, this game looks pretty cool. Let's check it out. Okay, so we have a useful Donald Duck. I'm on board. I like the character creation screen. This looks pretty cool. I wonder why it's not known as much. Okay, so you can play as some kind of lolly. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Oh. Oh, that is that is a no. That is a no. What is with the fascination with lollies in this game? I finally found you, master of my destiny. Yep, it's confirmed. They call you master and everything in this game. It's it's bait. It's bait. Alright, so in all seriousness guys, I've been playing Estelia online for a couple weeks now, off and on, and I'm ready to share my initial impressions of the game. Estelia can be described as a very on-rails theme park MMORPG, where your early levels will be spent playing the story quests, leveling up in zones with little to no freedom, until basically endgame. There's dungeons, some PvP content, and finally a pretty elaborate pet system called Estelles that you command. Estelia is currently a buy-to-play game with an initial upfront cost of 30 bucks, with other higher value value packs also available. Estelia has had a pretty big effort from the developers to break into the Western market. They added things like opposite gender options for classes when they were originally gender locked, as well as a promise of no pay to win. However, over the last couple of months or so that the game has been out, it's probably safe to say that it was eclipsed by the much more hyped Arc Age Unchained, which is a bit of a shame since the game I feel does do some things right. So is Estelia worth buying into and playing? Let's get into it. Estelia launched back in September of 2019, more specifically September 21st. As stated before, the developers of Estelia Studio 8 wanted to appeal to the Western market with this release. Much of its pre-launch campaign stated that it was a love letter to the classic MMORPG games of yesteryear, which I would have to say is a huge misrepresentation of what Estelia actually is. Estelia is more of a modern MMORPG take since it instances a lot of its maps as well as streamlines practically all of its Questing. It's definitely not a bad thing if you like that sort of progression, but for Estelia to advertise it being a classic MMORPG is a bit puzzling. Anyways, Estelia's main strengths come down to its flashy combat, collection systems called the Star Tale, the very cliche but honestly funny storyline the game has, as well as its pet system. When I say Estelia's story is cliche, it's like basically the definition of it. You are essentially the chosen one that can see and summon the Astels of the world, which are basically these little mini-gods with immense power. I actually like the story to this game because it's just so dumb and silly, and I feel that maybe the developers knew this as well, since a lot of the cutscenes and dialogue never take itself too seriously. <laughs> Dark. Leveling up in Estelia can unfortunately feel like a bit of a chore, but thankfully since it's streamlined to basically hand-holding status, it's nothing that will grate on you for too long. As you level up, you will be doing repetitive quests we've seen all before, which are talking to NPCs, killing a certain amount of mobs, etc, etc. As you level up, you will learn how to play your class, upgrade your gear, how to fight with your pets, augment your statistics, which all lead into the endgame, which consists of running daily content to further progress your gear and your pets since, besides your character level, all of your pets level up as well. I rolled an assassin as my first character, but there is also a warrior class, an archer, a scholar, which is this game's healer, and finally a mage. At the time of this video, only the warrior and assassin classes have gender customization with the archer, mage, and scholar classes being locked to female only currently, with the male version coming sometime in the future. Combat in Estelia is tap target, with you moving with WASD and then pressing the specific map buttons to perform your skills. Like I said before, the combat is very flashy with animation animations being downright beautiful to look at, with tons of particle effects and graphics that makes each fight feel really intense. I'd say this is probably one of the more refined tab target combat systems I've seen lately in big MMORPG releases, so it's good to see that they made combat fun to play. Going further into Estelle's, there is currently a whopping 34 pets to choose from, with 8 being equipped at once. Equipping and leveling up certain combinations of Estelle's will give you specific bonuses that will augment how you play with your class, so it's encouraged to try different Estelle's and level up all of them so you can swap out and try different builds for customization. Estelle's can also be customized further with different skins that you can either earn or buy in the cash shop for real money. The Estelle skins are typically pretty lackluster from what I've seen, and usually only being a color swap or adding specific effects to it. A lot of them are also pretty lewd, I would just have to say. 
Oh my. Most skins cost up to 15 bucks to purchase, but if you are having fun with the game, I can see it being something that collectors would want to support, much like a MOBA game with their hero skins. The cash shop in Estelia is also just like Studio 8 promised, non-pay to win, since really the only things you can purchase in the cash shop currently is either a premium membership in packs of certain times or cosmetics. Many of the cosmetics I saw in the cash shop as well were pretty low priced with some of them being as low as a couple bucks to deck out your character which is pretty great. You can also earn a lot of the cosmetics simply by playing the game with a currency called Zender which is earned from achievements, PvP, or end game content. Crafting in Estelia is really simple. You gather specific materials from choosing specific gathering professions from a choice of logging, metal mining, gem mining, herb gathering, and relic investigation. What's kind of weird though is Estelia only lets you choose one gathering profession at a time. You can reset them at any time so you can choose another. This is kind of weird and leads to a disconnect since you will be leveling up your gathering profession and then leveling up the specific crafting profession it will benefit most from, but you have access to all the crafting professions all at once. All the crafting professions include blacksmithing, jewel crafting, carpentry, tree, leather crafting, tailoring, alchemy, archaeology, and cooking. I would have rather seen them open up all the gathering professions for players rather than restrict it to only one choice at a time, but it could be something that they may change in the future with enough feedback since the developers are so open to listening to their community. Also, just look at that crafting animation. Everything is so sexual in this game. Gear in Estelia also seems to be completely based on RNG, with drops and crafted items giving random stats that will improve your character. Depending on your class, you will want to re-roll, regrade, or craft new equipment to get those stats that you want, which is part of the endgame grind. For instance, as an assassin, strength, dexterity, and agility are the stats that benefit me most improving my damage, accuracy, and dodge rate, while other stats won't benefit me as much. An activity that I fell in love with in Estelia, since it reminded me so much of the platform games that I used to play as a kid, was the Star Tail Collection System. Each area has a number of small tasks that you can complete to get specific rewards at certain completion intervals. This adds a ton of extra playtime to each area, depending on if you want to complete the Star Tail for each specific region. I will say most of it does boil down to just looking up a guide to see what you need to do, but I did sink a good bit of my playtime just trying to complete as much as I could for the Star Tail. Achievements are also pretty standard in Estelia with small tasks, rewarding you with with money or currencies that you can spend on gear or other trinkets like materials or treasures to equip. Personally, I always like when games incorporate an achievement system, so this was another positive for me. I'm so glad to say that the community in Estelia from what I experienced is incredibly friendly with most people willing to help out new players. Anytime I asked in chat a question, or if people wanted to group up for a specific task like an area boss, I always got help. In terms of dungeons and other instanced activities, you can queue for groups in the group finder, but I found that most of the lower level queues seem dead, as most players are probably playing the endgame dungeons. Guilds also seem plentiful with many willing to take new players and get new blood in their ranks, rather than posting ridiculous guild requirements. Overall, the community in Estelia was very refreshing compared to other MMORPGs, which can typically have a toxic community even if it's not very competitive. Estelia also has a lot of care in the graphics and music department, having some really wondrous thematic tracks to listen to while you play, and take in the breathtaking landscapes that are all very colorful and great to look at. I feel like I was almost playing a Final Fantasy game here, and I say almost, since the areas you can explore all have that same sort of vibe to them, especially with the music. Music. Now with all the positivity I'm giving Estelia, I'm sure some might wonder, well, what are the negatives? I kind of glossed over some of them earlier, like repetitive quests, very linear early game, and more or less a grindy endgame, but that's most MMORPGs at this time. I think what holds back Estelia unfortunately right now is just a lack of hype really. The population has definitely plateaued now that it's been a couple months after launch, with people even straight up asking on their forums if the game is dying in terms of player base. I definitely think the MMORPG genre has a place for Estelia here, but with only the pet system being a real unique part of the gameplay, it's easy to see why people might look elsewhere. Other games offer more things like diverse class structures, more open scale PvP, a more enticing endgame, other gameplay hooks, etc, etc. Overall, I think Estelia might have not gotten a fair shake from its early promotional material as well as its release window being so close to Arc Age Unchained. Personally, I enjoyed my time with Estelia. Here are my final thoughts. If you like a pet system in MMORPGs, 
Estelia is right up your alley, with tons of Estelles to choose from, with more to come in the future. The community in the game is incredibly helpful, and kind from what I personally experienced, which is a great thing to have, especially compared to other big releases recently that seem to gravitate a lot of toxic players for some reason. This specific release of Estelia is really trying hard to cater to a lot of mechanics that us in the West enjoy, which is rather nice to see for once from an Eastern-based MMORPG. Because of the work they did to fundamentally change and diversify itself, from the Eastern version, it's gotten a lot of good faith from the community that they will strive to keep their promises. Combat is flashy, fast, and fun to look at, with tons of unique animations. You can definitely tell a lot of quality work went into it, so no stiff animations here, except for maybe, you know, the generic casting. Magic missile! Magic missile! I'm out of mana! I need a pop! Relating to the Western catering of Studio 8, there is no pay to win in the cash shop right now. Obviously, a lot of players are fearing that they could change a lot of their promises in the future, but like I said, with a lot of the work that they put into changing so much, I have hopes that they will stick to their guns. The game, music, and art style is all very pretty to look at, which all just add to the experience when playing the game. They for sure have a great art team. Estelia is not free to play, so you will have to spend an upfront cost to dive into it. At the time of the video, there was not a free trial weekend, so if you aren't too keen on spending money just to try the game, you may want to pass on Estelia. Many reviews of Estelia state a couple common facts, but one I'd really have to agree with is that Estelia doesn't really do anything different from other MMORPGs. They need to implement more features you may not find in other games to really start drumming up more players. In terms of questing and leveling up, the game is very on rails unfortunately, and while that may not have bothered me, others may like a more open-ended approach to playing the game. While the community is great, it's not necessarily large. Currently, there is only one server to play on, and and from what people are saying, it's not as packed as it could be. For the most part, this impacts lower level players more, since typically it may be hard to find low level dungeons to group for, unless you have some friends. Finally, the game doesn't have a ton of character customization. Technically, with the advanced classes, there is a total of 15 classes in the game, but coming from other games where you can mix and match classes, weapon and armor sets, it does feel a bit restrictive. And that's all for this video. What did you think of Estelia? Are you currently playing it? Do you enjoy it? Did you pass on the game initially? Let me know in the comments down below. I respond to everyone, so I definitely encourage starting a discussion. If you like this video, I recommend helping the channel grow by pressing the subscribe button so you can see more content from me, as well as liking the video. I appreciate any support from you, the viewer. I also have social media links such as Twitter and Discord in the description below, so if you would like to follow me on those sites, follow those links. Lastly, as always, I would like to thank my loyal supporters who have been with me since the beginning. Anyways, that's all for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.